Hello and welcome YouTube, this is Doctor Who Fanatics to another Big Finish Order Review. I'll be taking a look at a release from 2014 which was out at April, which is Moon Flash featuring Peter Davison as the Doctor and Sarah Sutton as the companion Nyssa. And this story is written by Mark Morris, not really a well known writer for Big Finish, he's mainly known for writing the past and eighth Doctor books as well. I think he's written some Virgin as well. And you know my normal procedure, so let's get cracking. So for the cover art, we have Peter Davison as the Doctor. We have Sarah Sutton as Nyssa. We have a lion and a gorilla on the plate as well. We have the energy right by there. And we have Mr. Whitlock by there. And we have an egg in the background, I think, as well. And we're getting a very foresty uh, sort of cover art as well. A brilliant cover art, absolutely. So we have the side, get the light on it. Doctor Who uh, Moonflesh, 185. Vulture got a massive crack on here, which is sad anyway. Benny, this was written by Mark Morris, directed by Ken Bedley, 120 minutes approx. And for the blurb, one wouldn't normally expect to find elephants, gorillas, and rhinoceroses roaming free on Skullfuck in the year 1911. One wouldn't normally expect to find an extra dimensional police box at the same time, space, location, either. Two aliens named the Doctor and Nyssa exit said box only to find themselves purged by hungry lions. For now, they have landed in the pirate, private hunting grounds of the famous explorer, Widlock, who has brought together a motley group of friends and acquaintances for a weekend's shooting. But one of Whitlock's guests isn't all that they seem. One of them Wants the secrets of the moon flash. Well, that's the thing on the front cover. It was like, which I called the energy. The mystic mineral looked after by Whitlock's retainer, a Native American known as the Silver Crow, because the moon flesh is reputed to have the power to call down spirits from another realm. And soon the hunters will become the hunted. A uh, very uh, chilling uh, ending to that symbolist. So, all the cast featured in the story. So we have the discs, we have part one and two, this is going to open this way, part three and four, there's some other fifth doctor releases as well. And for the book nuts, just open it up, we have the writer's notes from Ken Bedley behind the scenes, writer's note, Doctor Who magazine, um, well, another installment, the one featured after it, which is Tomb Ship, which I cannot comment because I haven't got it. Credits, and if you want, you can flip it over if you desire. To my overall thoughts and opinions on Moonflash. Moonflash really feels like in the forest of the night by getting hunted by animals, but it's more better than that because in the forest of the night sucks, doesn't it? But no, it's not as completely like in the forest of the night. It has some extra tweaks in it where it's alien, not fairy tale. Anyway, let's get to the positives of Moonflash, which I can remember of. I do remember Peter Davison and Nissa and well, Sarah Sutton absolutely put in fantastic performances in the story. As well, I remember having very good character development between the two. I remember Nissa's character saying to another person, I think it was Mrs. Um, let me just turn it around. It was, um, yeah, it was Mrs. Whitlock. That was it. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit tired of traveling anymore. I want to stay in one location, which Nissa said, which was quite surprising. Of character development does not say that to the doctor's face, which um you know keeping it secret really has not told the doctor yet. I'm not sure if she says it in either Tomb Ship or Masquerade, which I do not know of, but it's a very interesting character development. I'm not sure if this will tie into Mistfall, Aquilium, and the Entropy Plague. I really don't know, but I'm not sure if it's in the same time zone anyway. Whose continuity is all over the place because we don't know which story comes after what. It's very confusing like that. But anyway, I remember the characters acting very, some of them really comedic, like Mr. Whitlock. I wasn't a really big fan of it because he was throwing com comedy right in your face. Uh, the enemy in the story wasn't just animals in it, they were featured very less in the story. It's rather than the moon first one, energy around the jungle, or skull off, or whatever the planet's called. Uh, quite a, not really a really threatening enemy, I didn't really do it that much rather than... I think it was possessing people, I think that's what his power was. Or shape shifting. I can't remember. I think I think it's more possessing. It's a pretty creative sort of monster by on Mark Morris as well. And the characterization of the story, I didn't remember it. I remember it being quite rushed, 
and uh, just all these characters thrown in your face, really. That's all I really remember of. I don't remember them being... None of them really being standard out rather than the, than the main characters, which was Peter Davison and Sarah Sutton as Nyssa. So, in conclusion, this script was rushed, absolutely. Mark Morris pre uh, stated that this story was going to happen in 2012, but he written it incorrectly, and it didn't work whatsoever. Themes were not explained whatsoever, and it, it would have caused confusion. So the script was delayed to 2014. And yet, yeah, it's a definitely an improvement, because they actually released it on a sit one actual storyline. But still, I can tell that the script is rushed. And think they're just throwing things too much in your face, they are. So yeah, Mark Morris, sort of a, you know, it's an unfinished project, this is pretty much. It's missing stuff. Story plots thrown into your face and unresolved. And some elements in it not really used that well, because I remember loads of animals being into the story, but then they were gone for no reason whatsoever. I, I guess maybe the Moonflash hunt, hunted them? So yeah, it is an unfinished story, which I see it. I would give it... I'm not really a big fan of it, to be honest. Probably a 5 out of 10. I would not recommend this story, to be honest. It's just a rush story with characters thrown into your face, overused on comedy, and too many plots in it, which gets unresolved. 5 out of 10 it gets. I'm not really a big fan of it. So that review was requested by TardisGuy123. I personally would not get it if I were you or anyone watching this. Don't bother, to be honest. If you're a fan of Peter Davison, you might like it, and you won't really bother about the plot holes, but depends how you really listen to it. But thank you very much for watching the review of Moonflesh. I think the next one is the Rani Elite, so stay tuned for that, and have a good one.